and if you are new to my channel welcome to my channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any videos and also click that little bell so you'll get a notification when I post so anyway today I am here to do a story time I've been trying to decide which story I wanted to do and start off with first so I think I was like hmm let's give them a good story get it out the way we're gonna talk about that time I went to jail yes me okay so maybe it wasn't jail jail but I was locked behind some bars and I couldn't get out on my own free will so I'm calling it jail I might even call it prison anyway <laughs> so if you want to know the story about how I went to jail stay tuned okay I'm gonna get into my Sophia mode picture it Wilmington August no October year 2000 so give you a little backstory my parents owned a store kind of like a you know like a little mom and pop corner convenience store and I started working for them so I could go to school it was easier for me to work for my parents so that way I could come and go as I needed to to go to classes now the store is in the hood right here directly across the street is a barbershop my uncles own the barbershop and my mom is a beautician and she uses the back of the barbershop for her hair salon so we was always right there anyway so in this store like I said it's in the hood <laughs> we used to sell you know cookies candies soda bread whatever you needed quickly now one day I'm working this guy comes in it's like an older man not too old mid 40s maybe and he's like uh, I need to see my name he gave and my mom's name and I'm like okay I'm Edna and I was like my mom's not here she's you know she's at work across the street I can call her and he's like okay so I called over there I'm like um, there's somebody that needs to see us come over here she's like alright I'll be there in a few minutes I'm doing somebody's hair so the guy's like uh, just let you know you and your mother are going to be under arrest and I'm like under arrest like he didn't have a police uniform on. he was just he was like yeah my name is detective whoever blah 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 and you two are being arrested for suspicion of misuse of food stamps now this was in the year 2000 so of course this is 17 years later this was back when the food stamps was in the little paper booklets and you had to rip them out and um, I'm like what so turns out we was being charged with because there was a guy on the police force I still remember his name was Brandon he was undercover and apparently he was coming in a lot to sell food stamps to my mother she would buy food stamps from various people because you know if you don't know nothing about the food stamp hustle if you got fifty dollars in food stamps I can give you twenty five dollars cash for the food stamps that's what people and you know that's what they do so she was buying food stamps from this guy and it's illegal so she was you know the store I guess he was doing it for a few months and was keeping track of whatever so I'm still in shock because I had never been in any kind of trouble in my life so I'm like arrested I'm just thinking what the hell so a few minutes later my mom comes over he says the same thing to her and he was like you know I know this is broad daylight it was probably like one o'clock in the afternoon one or two something like that and um, he was like so we don't I didn't bring a police car I have a unmarked car I'm not gonna put you guys in handcuffs I'm trying to be nice so you know you don't be embarrassed or whatever and I'm still in total shock so my mom's like what's going on my daughter don't have nothing to do with nothing and all this and he's like well she works here her name's on these forms so we are to take you all in so we go we had to lock up the store and I'm like by this time before my mom came over once he told me I was being arrested I called my dad and I'm like somebody's here they're saying me and mommy's being arrested I don't know what to do and I was like like in shock 
So he's like, okay, just, you know, be calm, whatever. I'm going to come over there. And I was like, what about Deja? She's in school. Who's going to pick her up? I'm going to jail, you know. It's crazy. He's like, you know, I'll, he always picked her up from school anyway, but I was just a complete nervous wreck. So we get in the police car. Now, mind you, this is the hood, so there's a lot of people that's always outside. They're watching us get out get out the building, go in the car, and then a lot of the people around there have had a run-in or two with the law, so they know what these cops look like, so they already know what's going down. My uncles come out the good barbershop, and they're watching we get put in this car they drive off now like i told you i had no idea what was going on i've never been in trouble for anything we get in the car we're driving down to the local police station in the midst of this he's like it's okay you guys are going to be okay this is just a preliminary thing blah 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 and then he kept saying my name he's like so and uh you know, you guys are being held on suspicion of food stamps. Did you know it's illegal to sell food stamps and all this? And I'm like, what? Huh? And I'm like, I don't know, I guess. Not knowing that anything you say can and will be used you against you in the court of law, right? I had no idea really what that meant until this whole situation. So he's asking me all these questions and I'm, I'm being a dummy. I'm answering them. So anyway, we get to the police station and they take us around the back and they put us like in a little room and we have to sit there and wait so they're you know filling out papers they're doing the fingerprinting they made me take off my clothes i was pissed i had to do like a full check mind you i had to lift stuff i had to bend stuff i had to squat i had to cough and I'm like, this big, you know, Bertha-looking chick is just misusing my body parts. And I was not happy about that. And I was just like, this is the most humiliating thing in my life. So, this, like, we're separated. Then they put us, finally, once they're done all that stuff, they put us in a room together. And we just have to wait. And I'm just, I'm just pissed. I'm like, I don't want to say anything. I'm so mad. Five minutes later... They come out and they put us like a handcuff. Now, this is crazy because not only am I going to jail and handcuffed, I'm shackled to my mother of all people. Who wants to get locked up with their mother? So they put the handcuffs on us. They put us in like a paddy wagon. It took us over to like the local, the local prison, which I was scared to death because they're like, oh, you're going to Gander Hill. That's a men's prison, first of all. Like, why we gotta go over there? But I didn't know that, you know, that's where they take you to do the video court or whatever. But up until all that time, all these hours are passing. They take us over there and they put us in a cell. <laughs> and there was this girl in there. And she was high on every type of drug you could probably think of. And she's just talking us to death. Like, I don't want to hear it. I'm pissed off. I had to use the bathroom. And all there was was this metal toilet just sitting there. And I'm like, I really got to pee right here in front of this person, in front of my mother. What the heck? It was crazy. Yeah, so I'm sitting here. I'm like, okay, well, I got to pee. So I'm sitting here peeing on this nasty little thing. And the girl steady talking about how she only had so many ounces on her they can't hold her and she knows her rights and all this stuff i was just like wow so hours go by and i'm just like it was cold it was freezing in there and they took my shoelaces um i was like wow it was cold i don't think i had a belt i think my mom might have had a belt on because i remember her saying they took her belt i don't think i had a belt but i know they took the shoelaces out of my sneakers and um it was crazy it was just it was horrible so fast forward to probably about three o'clock in the morning it was late maybe one between one and three i can't remember exact time they finally like okay you're going to go we went to this in front of this little tv in this little video judge and they they saying do you know this or do you agree to this blah 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 we're gonna let you go you didn't have we didn't have to pay any bail money i forget what it's called but we were able to just 
find out and leave. And then they're like, you're going to get something in the mail with a court date. And they're like, we'll send you something and you have to show up for court and then, you know, start that whole process. So we get out. And uh, <laughs> so the, the jail that we were at is only a few minutes away from, like, over a bridge from where our store was. So my mom's like, okay, well, I guess we'll just walk over there. We just started walking. And, um, and then, like, my mom called my sister, and she came and picked us up. Once we got to the store, you know, we called, and, and she picked us up. But it was crazy. Then I finally got home, and as soon as I got in the house, I just started bawling. I just started crying. Like, this whole time, I didn't cry, which was surprising to me because I'm a big crybaby. But I held it strong until I got home. And then, you know, like a, a few weeks later, we had to go to court. And my mom had hired a lawyer. So it turns out that I was able to get all my charges dropped because in the documents of, you know, this man coming in and then he goes back and documents what happened. Every time he came in to say, do you want to buy some food stamps? I would send him to my mother. So he didn't have, he never actually bought food stamps from me. So because of that, they were able to uh, drop the charges against me and I didn't have to do anything. Like my mom, she, once it was all over, she had to do like probation for a couple months. I think they gave her a year probation, but then she went like twice and they just let it go. It was fine because I guess it really wasn't a big charge, but... But then, so, because of it, the store lost its privileges to accept food stamps. Like, that was part of the, uh, her deal as well. So, she couldn't take food stamps from people. That was it. But let me tell you what. If I was ever in trouble before, that scared the crap out of me. And it was funny because, you know, these type of small stores, you get to know people. So, people come in and, and back then, loose cigarettes used to be a big deal. Like, you know, people would buy one cigarette at a time for, you know, a quarter, 50 cents, whatever it was. I stopped all that. You couldn't even come in there and ask me for a pack of matches without me looking at you sideways. I'm like, no. I ain't doing nothing that can even partly be illegal because I'm never going through that again. So, needless to say, the people were hated coming in the store when I was on duty because you could not do anything. You better not ask me for anything that might be partly illegal. So, that was that. And then, I thought it was all over. And it was funny because um, a few years later, I got a job um, with a big uh, corporate daycare. And when I went to get my fingerprinting done, it came back like a couple weeks later that, you know, this whole thing came up. And my director at the time was like, this came up on your record. Like, what's going on? And I was like, no, that all got dropped. I had, that had nothing to do with me. So I actually had to go and apply to have it expunged or whatever. So it would, so it would come off as not, you know, a thing or whatever. I guess it doesn't show up anymore. I don't even know. I've never had an issue with it popping up again. It might still be there, I'm sure. But I guess it's not like an immediate threat to if I wanted to get a job. But, yeah. I was not happy about that at all. That had to probably be like the worst day ever. But luckily, everything worked out. So, it's all good. Even though... I still remember it like it was yesterday. And it was 17 years ago. So anyway, that is my story time for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you had a few chuckles, you know, laugh at my pain. I can laugh at it now, but I was pissed back then. I was mad at my mom too. I think I ain't talked to her for like a week. I was, I was mad at her. I was so mad. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. If you want to hear any other stories, let me know. You know, give me a topic. Maybe I have a story about it. Well, I'll think of something else that was funny that happened. Appreciate you stopping by, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.